Hughes. We went from a team with under Pulis for, you know, that was probably 15th, 16th or so, maybe 14th. And then boom, we went to top 10 and it was just a different mindset. And, um, you know, it was nothing against Pulis, but I, I flourished in front under Mark Hughes and he put his faith in me and he relied on me and, you know, I would run through a brick wall for him because I did well when I played for him. And he played me center half. He played me defensive midfield. I played right back. Pretty, he pretty much used me all around the pitch. Um, and for me, that was great because I got to play. I, I was I was playing every single week. Copa yeah. America, the World Cup, um, you know, um, my first kind of breaking on the scene with Jurgen, And, yeah, he just – you know, kind of learning from, you know, Carlos Bocanegra and, and him kind of like bringing me along and, um, and then, yeah, just kind of going down and you're like, kind of like you're, you're throwing, you're playing against Guatemala or you're playing against El Salvador. And like, you see like the passion and you playing against Mexico. And when we, when we beat Mexico, like in, in the Azteca, when Michael Orozco scored and like, it was crazy, you know, and then you go there and you, and you get a, you get a couple ties and, and big, big games. Uh, when you have like a hundred thousand people, you know, cheering you on and, or no, not cheering you on, absolutely slaughtering you. And when he <laughs> took it over, like he, he, his expectations went way up here and it's like, no, this is not good enough. The hotels, no, this isn't it. We need to be staying at, this needs to be professional. We need to do this X, Y, Z we need to be playing against top European countries. We need to be challenging and playing friendlies against these, these countries, because you know what, this is where you get better. This is where you're playing against um, players that are playing in champions league, playing Europa league, playing the Premier league, playing La Liga in, in Germany, the Bundesliga. These guys are, these are the guys that you're going to see playing and at a role, how much of an honor it was to play for the national team. And then, you know, with the, the last, the last part of the qualifying, the last kind of the last disappointing part of my national team career was, it was kind of taken away from me. And, you know, I, uh, I might even say his name, but when, when, when a, when a manager says stuff that's not true or says, you know, I'm the scapegoat for being upset and being, I'm um, being called the bad egg when that's never been you know, the case. I don't want to get into politics and stuff like that, but it, it's more of like, I would get messages from players and like, like, I'm so happy you said that, or like, I'm with you on this, but they wouldn't come out publicly. They won't say it because they're afraid of something. And I'm like, yeah, but what does that do? Whether you're conservative or liberal, like everybody should have a voice. And I think that's the biggest problem now is if anything, everything is offensive to everyone. Everyone is like, you can't say what you want to say now, because if it doesn't follow like this way of thinking, then like you're wrong and that's it. And I think that's the problem. Like we are as a society are, are going is, and that's like with football and anything, like you don't see football just played one way now. Like it's multiple, it's different ways. Is Pep's way the only way of just playing tiki tacky football? No, because if you think about it, he's had to adapt his game and change it a little bit slightly to evolve with the time in football. And that's the same thing as, when anybody says anything or their beliefs and like, you know, Aaron Rodgers came out, I saw, I saw a thing and like, he said something about like, you know, with the masks and stuff like they don't follow their own protocol. Well, he's right. So why is he getting stick for saying something that he believes in? Every time with Houston, I just said like, I want to, I want to give it a go. You're going to push me. He's like, you know, you need to challenge yourself. You want to play at the highest level. This is, that's where I wanted to do. And, you know, it's a long story short, but I had I had a few other teams that were I was interested in. You know, talked to Tim. Tim, uh, when I played against Everton in the the All Star game, I think David Moyes was kind of following me from there. And um, you know, I was I kind of between David Moyes myself, and I I got on the phone with Tim Howard, and he's like, "Don't sign, don't don't agree to personal terms with Stoke. Uh, we want to come to Everton." And I was like, "Yes, like." great like I'll, I'll go to Everton and this is a great opportunity and kind of agreed to personal terms with Everton already uh, but then there was a um, decision made by the league and um, they made the kind of 
decision to go with Stoke because they've already agreed on the price. And then I realized that, you know, later on it was, um, you know, Stoke had a part ownership in, in, in the MLS and or one of the owners um, and they didn't kind of want to ruin that relationship at the time. And then you kind of see like, oh, that that's kind of, that was my decision, but it didn't matter where I ended up if, and at the end of the day, I'm, ha- I'm actually really, really happy. I, I ended up going to Stoke because I made, I created my own. Me, it, it would have been a cool opportunity to play in another country for sure. But at the end of the day, I was like, you know, I was only a few games behind Clint and I was always chatting. I'm like, Clint, I'm going to catch you. I'm going to, I'm going to get more appearances for outfield player than you. And I think the year I got, we got relegated. I was like, Oh shit. Like, yeah, I'm about 20 off of them. And I'm like, I knew I would have beat him. I would have for sure. I would have been able to hold that over his head. And then he would have just played the Trump card and be like, well, you know, I've scored how many goals? And I'd be like, fair <laughs> I also fair have enough. to realize like, it doesn't come easy. You got to grind. You got to work your, your butt off. And, you know, there are moments where I wanted to go hang out with my friends and down the street and hang out with my buddies and, my dad's like, I'm paying, I'm working a side job because I got to pay for your travel on the weekend and for a turn- soccer tournament because it's not free. So you're going to make sure you do your homework and then you're going to go out in the backyard and you're going to practice. And, you know, where there are times where I was upset and disappointed, 100%, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. And uh, I love my dad even more for, you know, making making it hard and, and, and pushing me because he saw the potential in me. You know yeah. So um it's really interesting in, in perspectives because everybody wants to win every single game but in reality you just know like because there's relegation you know where you have to pick up points and i think that's what i think i would love to see the mls do something like that or have some some purpose of like it shouldn't be great if a team finishes bottom you know there should be some consequences there should be something Because I guarantee the games will be much more intense. And, you know, at the end of the day, like you're on good money. And then all of a sudden your, your money slashed. The intensity is completely different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, that, what that will just push. And I think it will be make, make fans even more aware and more in tune to it and understand like, yeah, they're not going to just keep getting their check, but there's something that they're fighting for, you know? Mm -hmm.